make decisions to glow. Ridiculous flow, potential to glow. Hey guys, I hope you're all having an amazing day. Today I'm going to teach that through the floor foreground wipe you saw in the beginning of this video and maybe you've seen in some other people's films like Sam Calder and Brandon Lee. If you know another film or video that this effect was used in, shoot me a comment below. First though, if you're creative and you're into videography, photography, and just creating in general, then consider subscribing. I do tutorials, I give tips, I have reviews, and I have some of my films on this channel as well. This effect can be used in a variety of ways. You can use this for real estate videography, maybe to go from one room to the next. You can use this for commercial projects as well as uh, travel videos obviously like you've seen. So with filming, you'll film both shots moving in the same direction, which for us is down. Basically you're executing two smooth jib shots with that first jib shot going all the way down to the floor and that second jib shot starting as high as possible and then moving down to whatever framing you'd like. A little side note, when you do the jib shot, slow your motion down when you get a couple inches off the floor. I'll talk about why we do that later in this video. If you can find something in the foreground that will block the camera in either shot when you are say coming down to the floor or starting at the ceiling, that'll make the shot look a little bit better. But don't fret if you guys only have a flat floor or flat ceiling. I've actually created a Photoshop image that you guys can download in the description below that you can use when you're editing so it looks like you're going through a floor. With the first shot, find the point where you started to slow down your gimbal movement. Press M on your keyboard to set a marker at this point. This will be the spot where we will use the transform tool to digitally bring that first shot up. We slow down at the end because we will digitally be moving it up at a similar speed to the first part of that clip. The reason we shot so wide is so we can scale our shot bigger in post. This will give us room to move that clip up. Press the transform tool and the keyframe button at the point where that shot starts to slow down. Then go to the end of the shot and drag the clip up a ways. You'll have to play with this to get the speed correct. You'll want to match the speed with the first part of the clip as best as possible. Next, drag your PNG image of the floor over top of your clips. I designed this PNG with pipes originally, but I realized I didn't like the look of the pipes as I went past it, so I uploaded the better, newer version in the description below. Scrub to the section of your first clip where your shot starts to get slower, and right about here is where you will introduce the floor. Scale the PNG image up a tad so you don't have any edges showing and press the keyframe button at the beginning. Drag the floor image straight up out of the frame using the second shot to decide where you want it to be out of the shot. Since we press the keyframe button at the beginning of the PNG image, there's no need to press it again at this end point because it's already saved. After this, you'll need to speed up that first shot so it moves in accordance with the floor. This definitely takes some time to make it look natural. I don't think I was able to make it look natural, but if I spent more time on it, I could have made it look a little bit smoother. Just have some patience on this and don't be bummed if you need to press reset and play with the speed and position positioning of both clips again to get it right. The next thing we're going to do is position that second clip so it shows up when the floor image wipes up to reveal the bottom. You'll notice that since the floor wipe doesn't fully cover the frame and allows for both clips to be seen during some frames in the shot, we will need to mask out the top half of the second shot since we have now placed it above the first shot in the timeline. Think of the timeline like stacking pictures. To see the bottom picture, we will need to cut out a part of the picture above it. So what we will do here is use a graduated mask in the effects window, place it on that second clip, and adjust it so the top half of that shot is cut off. Do so by moving these circles around. Since we don't want the graduated mask on that second shot the whole time, we will press the keyframe button and drag the amount down to zero once we want it to fade out. After this, now to work on the piece de resistance, which are the sound effects. I added a hip hop song in which I added a small room audio effect to play it off like it was playing in the room. I also added an effect that would make it sound like we are going down and away from the source of music by going to pan, clicking mode, and create space. From here I pressed the keyframe down where I wanted the source of the sound to start and I dragged it up so it sounds like we're moving away. I also added a muffled effect so it sounded like we're going through the floor and the music was being muffled. Some other sound effects I added were kind of a machinery type sound when we were passing through the floor, ambiance from a hotel lobby, footsteps, and a whoosh sound for when we pass through the floor. And that about wraps it up guys. It doesn't look perfect, but this was my first time creating this effect and I hope it gave you a general sense of how you can create it yourself. If I taught you something today, it would mean a lot if you press the thumbs up button and if you haven't subscribed already, consider doing so if you want to see more videos like this. Now get out there and go create.